Let's help this Dollar General sign reach its potential. Keep watching. All right, so I've got a variety of ribbon here um, from the Dollar Tree, and then my sign is from Dollar General. The wreath form is also from Dollar Tree. All right, so I'm going to take this wider burlap that I had thrifted from Goodwill, and I'm just going to wrap this around the frame. You can wire it, or you can glue it, or you can use the combination of the two. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of wire and poke that through there, around and twist it in the back. I think later I do add a little bit of glue to it. Then I'm gonna start counting and cutting strips. The longer the strips, the bigger the bow. And I think I had seven inches here for these strips. So there's one. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. I cut eight pieces. At first, I wasn't certain how many I would need, how many bows I was going to use, so I went ahead and cut them all, and then I have extras to use on another project coming up. Just for some variety, I have cut some of the thinner satin ribbon that comes from Dollar Tree as well. And I thought about using a little burlap, but I did not. Okay, so now I'm just going to Add in some orange that was actually from a thrift store. They're all wired except for the satin. Okay, and this one is a sheer, I don't know, like a sheer beige color. A variety of colors that coordinate, give a little more interest. Darker colors with lighter colors are going to give you more depth. So I'm just stacking these bows in a kind of like a flat X pattern. Just giving a little variety here. That was to give me an idea of how I wanted the bow to look. Now I'm going to go on to putting the back of this sign together in a way that I can attach it to the frame. So I'm just using some hot glue, a little bit of floral wire, and then a little piece of ribbon or fabric to hold it. Now you can see on mine, there's a little hole in the back, and it looks like a hole in the burlap, but you won't ever see that. That'll be against the wall, so I'm not really, I'm not gonna stress about that. Then I'm gonna take the wires, feed them through the burlap. I had already done that in several spots and on this one I was like heck with it. Give me the glue gun. <sighs> so I glued that corner down. Gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail all of my pieces of ribbon, even the little thin satin ribbon. Again, here we go in the crisscross. You don't have to keep these in the same pattern. You can put these any way you want. It just is better if you put the smaller ones to the front because you won't be able to see them if they're under the pile. So whatever, whatever you want to do. But for my OCD brain, some days it's better than others. I like to do it this way. Then I'm just going to take my pipe cleaner, pinch the center, and then twist it. And I'm going to continue to make bunches of these. 
and fluff them all out. When I say fluff with this type of bow, what I mean is kind of curling the wire, kind of pushing up and pulling down on the wire so it has a little bit of a bow in it. And that gives it, again, the word dimension, it gives it some dimension, it gives it some lift so it's not laying flat on that, uh, on our picture there. All right, so those are the five I've decided I'm going to use, and I'm going to put the rest of the ribbon aside for another project. Now, because I don't want my pipe cleaners to show because I had scraps, I'm going to go ahead and use these little pieces of jute. These are scraps that I had to tie around the middle to cover up the little pipe cleaner. doing a double knot and if I decide I want to aggressively fluff which I have a habit of doing I won't pull anything apart so now it's up to you just decide where you want to put your bows obviously if you have more bows you want to put them closer together if you have less then you can space them out you can turn them to the side you can whatever you want to do there but I decided it might be cute to give it um, a round shape since the actual picture has a round wreath on it. Now you can just start using the glue and hot gluing those down. So these clamps that I got from Dollar Tree are good to help hold those bows in place. Sometimes after you've fluffed them, the bulk of the bow tries to come off of the flat surface underneath because it has a kind of a curve to it. So if you put these on, it will gently, without destroying your bow, hold it in place until your glue has dried. And so that's what I'm doing, except for my nippers there that are holding down one corner. Now that looks better. Okay, give it a few minutes and then I can take off the clips and then refluff the bows if they need it. You see how I cup my hand around it and kind of flip it up and out? And that's how you make the little, make the bow stand up a little bit. If you know the name of this particular bow, feel free to put it in comments because I don't know exactly what the name of it is. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a hanger on the back with a pipe cleaner and some glue. I just twisted it, left a loop in the top, and then curled the bottom around and flattened it out. And that makes a good little hanger. And that is it. There is our pretty little Dollar General and Dollar Tree and thrifted wreath. Hope you like it. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, if you know anybody who would like this content, be sure to share it with them. Give me a thumbs up if you like what we've got. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye.